Welcome to our health fair presentation. We are excited to talk to you today about a very important topic, prescription drug misuse. Our names are Carly Bell and Gladys Lorenzo, and we are second year pharmacy students at the Daniel K. Inouye College of Pharmacy. This topic is important to talk about because it is a common problem throughout the United States, including Hawaii. What is prescription drug misuse? Let's start with some definitions. Misuse refers to taking a legally prescribed medication in an improper way. That includes taking more of the medication than what the doctor had prescribed, continuing to use medication after the time given by the doctor, or starting the medication before the doctor says to start. Lastly, misuse can also mean taking medication that is prescribed to another person. Drug abuse, on the other hand, is a disorder characterized by a destructive pattern of abusing a substance that leads to significant problems or distress. These two terms, misuse and abuse, are often used interchangeably in conversation, but they do have distinct differences. The main difference is the intent behind their use. Misuse happens when a drug is taken with a therapeutic intent outside of the way it was prescribed, meaning that it is used to cure or reduce some kind of symptom without doctor's instructions. Abuse is when a substance is used for non-therapeutic purposes, such as to feel good or to get high. Not all prescription misuse leads to abuse, but both instances have the potential to cause serious health problems. Why do people misuse drugs? Some common reasons, according to a Better Today Recovery Service, are stress, curiosity, peer pressure, and being misinformed. Some drugs are misused as coping mechanisms to deal with life's uncertainties and the pressure from a career, school, or other aspects of life. Another reason is that people do it out of curiosity. They want to explore a new aspect of life. And some may be peer pressured and do experimenting with drugs or alcohol for fun. Lastly, people are misinformed. They take medications without medical advice, or they may have innocent intentions when sharing leftover medications with others. How are prescription drugs obtained? Drugs are commonly given or taken from peers, friends, or family members. They might be stolen from pharmacies or obtained from fake prescriptions. There is also the practice of doctor shopping or pharmacy hopping, where some people go to different doctors to get prescriptions or until they get the medical opinion they want to hear. They may also use different pharmacies to get those prescriptions filled, which might be possible due to the lack of communication between pharmacies to catch those suspicious behaviors. Some pick up their medications and sell them for profit rather than taking them themselves. There's also the dangerous practice of pill parties, where a variety of drugs are shared in a party setting. Here is a table of commonly misused medications according to the National Institute for Health. The most common classes of misused medications are stimulants, sedatives, and opioids. All of these medications have the potential to cause serious problems if taken improperly. Stimulants like Ritalin and Adderall can increase blood pressure, which can strain the heart, increase heart rate, and cause possible respiratory issues. Sedatives like Valium, Xanax, and Ambien can cause withdrawal symptoms. And opioids like Vicodin, Oxycontin, and Percocet can cause dangerously slowed or shallow breathing. We pick these medications because they are the commonly misused medications to date in the state of Hawaii. Opioids are commonly prescribed for both acute and chronic pain. We'll be talking about these drugs from the previous slide due to them being the most commonly misused prescriptions. Acute pain usually starts suddenly, has a known cause, like an injury or surgery, and normally gets better as the body heals. Chronic pain lasts three months or more and can be caused by a disease or condition, injury, medical treatment, swelling, or another unknown reason. There are risks that come with taking these medications, but if they are taken as prescribed, there will be less misuse or potential abuse. Here are some statistics about misuse prescriptions. Anyone taking opioids is at risk for addiction or accidental death. From 1999 to 2017, more than 218,000 people have overdosed due to prescription drugs. Up to one in four people getting long-term care for opioid therapy struggle with opioid use disorder. In 2019, more than 9 million people misused prescription painkillers, 4.9 million people misused prescription stimulants, and 5.9 million people misuse prescription tranquilizers or sedatives. Most medications were reported as being obtained by family and friends and often found in medicine cabinets. 
These commonly misused drugs continue to be misused even during the COVID-19 pandemic. These are some statistics about opioid use before and during the pandemic. It is important to note that over 48,000 people died due to synthetic opioid overdose and nearly 15,000 people died due to a heroin overdose in 2019 to June of 2020. The death from opioid overdose is still prominent even during a global pandemic. A shocking 10.1 million people in the United States were said to have misused prescription opioids during this time. The misuse and abuse of prescription drugs is more common than the average person might believe. Here is a visual about some of the long-term side effects due to opioid use. Some of the more serious ones are the psychiatric, respiratory, and muscular side effects. The psychiatric side effects include depression, hallucination, and dizziness. The respiratory side effects are difficulty or slowed breathing, and the muscular side effects include seizures and general muscle weakness. Next, we want to define what is an opioid overdose. An overdose happens when the levels of opioids are too high in a person's system. This can lead to loss of consciousness, slowed or stopped breathing, pale, ashy, cool skin, and blue lips or fingertips. These symptoms can happen suddenly or slowly over the course of a few hours, and the result can be fatal. What causes an overdose? Many people know that an overdose happens when someone takes prescription medication more often or in higher doses than prescribed. People can also overdose using opioid pain medications with alcohol or other drugs like sleeping pills, taking them with benzodiazepines such as Valium and Xanax, cocaine and methamphetamine. It is important to note that there may be other reasons for overdose that are still not well understood by scientists. It is possible that one's tolerance for opioids may decrease due to an extended stay in a treatment facility, hospital, or jail. After a break from opioids, the body can't handle as much as it did before, which can lead to a more sudden overdose. Also, if someone has a chronic disease like something that weakens the heart or makes it harder to breathe, it can increase the chances of an overdose while on opioids. It is also unsafe to use opioids alone. You are more likely to die from an overdose if no one is there to help you. Finally, a person who has overdosed before is likely to overdose again. Speaking more broadly about overdosing, here is a graphic showing the overdose rate by state. This includes all overdoses and not just overdoses due to opioid use. In 2019, Hawaii was in the 13.6 to 16 range with a total of 242 deaths related to overdose. What can you do in the case of an opioid overdose? Narcan, generic name is naloxone, is a medication that can reverse an overdose from opioids specifically by helping to restore breathing to unconscious overdose victims. This is a psychoactive drug that comes in a nasal spray or injection and has no potential for misuse or abuse. Pharmacists are able to prescribe this medication in the state of Hawaii to anyone that is at risk for an opioid overdose and their loved ones. Although we have talked in detail about opioid misuse, other drugs can be harmful when they are misused. How can you prevent misuse? Take medication only as directed by a healthcare professional and follow the instructions prescribed by the doctor. Do not share medications with other people. Keep medications safe by keeping them out of reach from children or in a safe or lockbox. Avoid leaving them out on the counter or in cabinets. Find local pharmacies that have medication disposal boxes so that unused medication can be disposed of properly. Educate and learn about how substance abuse develops, including using addictive drugs, either illicit or prescribed for recreational purposes, seeking out intoxication with every use, or abusing prescription medication. How should medications be stored? Medication should be kept away from areas with high temperatures, from direct light, away from humid places, and kept in airtight containers. They should be stored in a cool, dry place away from pets and children. It is not recommended to store medications in the bathroom medicine cabinet due to the change in temperature and humidity. How long should you keep medications? Many people keep medications for longer than they should. All prescription drugs and over-the-counter medications are required to have an expiration date, which are the final day that medications are guaranteed to have full effect and safety. But some people keep their medications for months to years after that date. Medications should be checked once or twice a year for expiration dates and disposed of properly, according to the CDC. The best way to prevent prescription drug misuse is to remove the risk. 
Here's a list of the preferable ways to dispose of medications. National drug take back programs, which include biannual events, as well as permanent collection sites, local disposal locations within the household trash, and as a last resort, flushing medications on the FDA approved list, which we'll explain later in the presentation. National drug take back programs are a service provided by the Drug Enforcement Agency or DEA and provides the Americans the opportunity to prevent drug addiction and overdose related deaths by helping to dispose of unused or expired medications. The service is free and anonymous, no questions asked. Tablets, capsules, patches, and other solid forms of medication will be accepted. However, liquids and newer used needles and syringes are not. These usually occur twice a year in the spring and in the fall, and more information about the drug take back events can be found at the DEA government website. Outside of national drug take backs, there are local drug disposal locations that are available all year round. Here on Hawaii Island, many of the Hawaii Police Departments have drug disposal boxes like the one pictured here, as well as some at the Long's CVS locations. However, there are limitations on the items that can be accepted at local drug drop-offs, which will be further explained. Here is a map of the state of Hawaii with other local drug disposal locations. More information about statewide drop-off locations can be found at hawaiiopioid.org slash drug take back. As we mentioned before, there are items that local drug disposal boxes do not accept, which include illegal drugs, aerosol sprays, alcohol and hydrogen peroxide, needles and syringes, though some pharmacies have other bins for disposal or mail back, more than four ounces of liquid, mercury thermometers, batteries, chemicals, and other home-based care or durable medical supplies. If drug take-back days and local drug disposal boxes are not available options, while not ideal, another way of disposing unused or expired medication is in the household trash. First, you would mix it with some unpalatable substance like cat litter, dirt, or used coffee grounds. Then place the mixture in a plastic bag before throwing it all away in the trash. Make sure any personal information is scratched out or removed before throwing away the empty medicine bottle. The final option to dispose of unused or expired medications if drug take back days and local drug disposal boxes are not available to you is by flushing them down the toilet, but only if they are on the FDA's flush list. It's essential to remove any personal information from the medicine bottle before throwing it away in the trash. This is a table of all of the drugs according to the FDA that can be flushed down the toilet, including drugs that are mainly in the opioid classes and some in non-opioid classes. These drugs are more harmful in one dose and can lead to serious problems. It is beneficial to dispose of these medications by flushing them rather than risk the possible bad outcome. As a reminder, if the drug take back events or access to local drug disposals are not an option, flushing these drugs is a last resort. <laughs> Which begs the question, is flushing medication environmentally safe? According to a study published by the FDA, yes. There's almost no risk to the environment. The study also showed that the physiological effects on fish is low and that the human risk from eating the fish exposed to these flushed drugs and the water was also very low. More research is needed for some of the medications on the flush list, but since they are of similar compounds, it's assumed that they are safe. We have gone over a lot of information today, but we wanted to go over a few key takeaways. People store expired or unused medications for long periods of time, some up to years past the expiration dates, which can lead to their misuse. People might take or share medications that are expired because they do not know what to do with them. These medications should be disposed of properly to prevent misuse. The most preferable option would be national drug take back days or local drug disposal locations, though limitations on the items that they accept do apply. The next best option is to mix drugs with unappealing substances and dispose of them in the household trash. Lastly, it is to flush medications on the FDA approved flush list. When prescription medications are taken properly, the benefits outweigh the risks. Yet still throughout the country, we continue to see the misuse and abuse of medications. It is important to take medications as they are prescribed and to be educated on the ways of disposing unused or expired medications properly. We hope this presentation thoroughly examines the options available to prevent the misuse of medications in the future. And here are our resources that we use to prepare this presentation today. Thank you. Thank you.